Okay, welcome to our second video about ABA terms. This is a YouTube channel to help you pass the BCBA exam. All material we provided is based on the 5th edition BCBA exam requirements. The topic of today's video is about terms you must know in BCBA exam. This video is presented by BCBA Mock Exam. For more information, you can visit us at www.bcbamockexam.com. Let's get started. Our first term contains behavior, response, and response class. Behavior refers to any observable action or reaction made by an organism in response to its environment. For example, a dog barking at a passerby or a child crying when they're hungry are both examples of behaviors. A response, on the other hand, is a specific instance of behavior. It is a particular reaction to a given situation. For example, if we take the behavior of a dog barking, a specific response might be when the dog barks at a mail carrier. A response class, then, is a group of behaviors that produce similar consequences or share similar antecedent conditions. For example, a response class of dog barking might include barking at the mail carrier, barking at a stranger, or barking when a doorbell rings. The second term is about stimulus and stimulus class. A stimulus is any event or circumstance that elicits a response from an organism. It can be a physical object, sound, smell, taste, or even a thought. For example, the smell of food might be a stimulus that elicits a response of hunger in a person. A stimulus class, on the other hand, is a group of stimuli that share similar characteristics and elicit similar responses. For example, a stimulus class of colors might include red, blue, green, and yellow, all of which are colors that elicit visual responses. The third term is about the respondent and operant conditioning. Respondent conditioning is a type of learning in which an organism learns to associate a neutral stimulus with the naturally occurring stimulus. Over time, the neutral stimulus becomes a conditioned stimulus that elicits the same response as the naturally occurring stimulus. For example, a dog might learn to associate the sound of a bell with the arrival of food and begin to salivate at the sound of the bell alone. Operant conditioning, on the other hand, is a type of learning in which an organism learns to associate a behavior with a consequence. Behaviors that are followed by positive consequences such as rewards are more likely to be repeated, while behaviors that are followed by negative consequences such as punishment are less likely to be repeated. For example, a rat might learn to press a lever to receive a food pellet, while avoiding pressing a lever that shocks them. The fourth term is positive and negative reinforcement contingencies. Positive reinforcement is a type of consequence in which a behavior is followed by the addition of a desirable stimulus or reward, increasing the likelihood of the behavior being repeated in the future. For example, a child might receive a piece of candy for finishing their homework, which increases the likelihood of them completing their homework in the future. Negative reinforcement, on the other hand, is a type of consequence in which a behavior is followed by the removal of an aversive stimulus, increasing the likelihood of the behavior being repeated in the future. For example, a person might take pain medication to relieve a headache, which increases the likelihood of them taking pain medication in the future when experiencing a headache. Both positive and negative reinforcement contingencies increase the likelihood of a behavior being repeated, but they achieve this through different means. Positive reinforcement adds something desirable, while negative reinforcement removes something aversive. The fifth term is schedules of reinforcement. Schedules of reinforcement refer to the pattern and frequency with which a behavior is reinforced. There are several types of reinforcement schedules. Continuous reinforcement schedule. In this schedule, the behavior is reinforced every time it occurs. This type of reinforcement is effective in establishing a new behavior. Fixed ratio schedule. In this schedule, the behavior is reinforced after a fixed number of occurrences. For example, a rat might receive a food pellet every five times it presses a lever. Variable ratio schedule. In this schedule, the behavior is reinforced after a variable number of occurrences. For example, a slot machine might provide a payout after an unpredictable number of pulls. Fixed interval schedule. In this schedule, the behavior is reinforced after a fixed period of time. 
For example, a dog might receive a treat every 30 minutes for staying in the designated area. Variable interval schedule. In this schedule, the behavior is reinforced after a variable period of time. For example, a supervisor might give praise to employees at unpredictable intervals for good performance. Different schedules of reinforcement have different effects on behavior. Continuous reinforcement tends to result in rapid learning, while intermittent schedules tend to result in more persistent behavior. That's all the ABA terms for today's video. We will post more videos about key ABA terms and definitions in BCBA exam. So please follow our channel and let us to help you pass the BCBA exam at the first try. If you wish to study more ABA terms and try real BCBA exams, welcome to visit us at www.bcbamockexam.com. That's all the contents for today's video. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoy it.